get in bodies where you don't get free. You don't get a selfie with everybody. Let's all get together. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, come on. I want everybody, come on, squeeze. I know you just sat down, but squeeze over across the middle. And yeah, I want to get a selfie with everybody before I preach. That way, if you don't like me while I preach, we'll be able to still. Come on. Is that good? Oh, we need to get here, here. This is like a real here. big church. Here, here. Oh, here. It is a big church. <laughs> well, I mean, wait, hold on. Hold on. We have to. No, gotta speak. I gotta get up there. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Here we go. Let's do that. Oh, there we go. That'll work. Everybody say. Everybody throw your hands in the air. All right, I got it. Good deal. Thank you, Mexico. Uh, hey, I want to say this. First of all, I, I love your pastor. Today, he walked me around the property at the at the other camp. Give me everything God's doing. I got to walk around and say, God is awesome. Isn't he what he's doing for you guys? You guys are an incredible group of people. I love your pastor. First time I met him, I'm going to be honest with you, he scared me. How many of you ever got scared the first time you met him? Anybody? He's just like in your face. If you're if you're fat, he tells you you're fat. If whatever, he just tells you the truth. And uh, and yeah, and uh, I uh, I but I love people that are genuine. Very honored. I know that Bishop Tony Miller, his first time that he, you guys. Uh, I remember the very first time he left here. He said, "Man." You got to go with me the next time I go to the old country. Be able to come with him. My son actually. Wow. And the whole holy wild thing, I mean, that's for real. Right? Yeah. Turn the person next to you and say, that's for real. That's real. I, uh, I really do have something. I know it's Tuesday night. I know uh, some of you guys are watching on uh, live stream. Live stream. Not Facebook live because I heard you already messed that one up. So I have something I really want to share with you guys tonight, but honestly, while we were worshiping, I want to do something else here at the beginning that that's that I want to share with you a little And um, the reason I want to do it is just because the Holy Spirit told me. And uh, I, I had a, something out of John chapter 2 we're going to go to in just a minute that I believe God has for but about five years ago, five years ago, my wife and I were listening to a sermon. Another pastor was preaching. I won't even tell you who it is. But he was sharing a story about how God had blessed him and some things that God had put on his heart, things he was doing. And he just told stories. How many of you like to hear stories that God's doing in other people's lives? And I was listening to what God did in his life. And he simply just said this. He said, one day God told me to give a lady in our church a $100 bill. And he did it. He said he didn't really have tons of extra money to do it, but he did it. Purposed in his heart to do it every week. He found somebody just to give a $100 bill to. And as I listened to the story, he just said he was, he was really listening to the Holy Spirit. And I told my wife, I said, babe, I want to be able to do it. I want to be able to just bless people and sow into people. And so I, I told God, I said, God, I want to be able to do that. God said, well, this is what we'll do. I need something to work with. So I went, this, I went and grabbed this bag. This is an old Wells Fargo bag that I had. Pastor, I got this bag, and the first extra $100 I got, I stuck it in here. I stuck a $100 bill down in here, threw it in here. Next week, I had another couple hundred extra dollars come in. I threw it in there. I had about $1,000 in there. Actually, it was exactly $1,000. And then God says, now i got something to work with. Now, how many of you know he could work with just 100 But I was just doing what I was, felt like the Holy Spirit told me. He said, now i got something to work with. And I basically started just giving. I did the same thing. I just did what that other guy did, that other pastor did. And I said, I felt like, Holy Spirit, I want to be able to do that. And he said, well, I'll help you do it. I started... Pastor Jerry, given out of this bag, I started pulling $100 bills out of here. 
In a matter of about four weeks, I had given all ten of those thousand of those hundred dollar bills away. I'd only put ten in. And I had a secret little drawer in my house. I put this bag in. At that point, now I carry it around with me everywhere. But I had never done anything publicly like this before. Never really shared the story or said anything about it. A couple months back, I was speaking to a group of college graduates. They were all graduates that were transitioning from college. And as I stood there sharing with them something, the Holy Spirit reminded me about this bag. He said, give all of those students a $100 bill out of that bag. And I did. But I want to go back to tell you something about this bag and what God did with that obedience to just throw those $1,000 bills in there. At, at the end of a few weeks, I had given those, I know I'd given $1,000 away easy. Went and grabbed the bag, and when I brought the bag out to thinking I was going to replenish it. Pastor Jerry, there was probably another ten, fifteen hundred dollar bills in the bag. I went and asked my wife, I said, babe, did you put more money in the bag? She said, no, I didn't put any more money in the bag. Nobody else had been in our house in that bag. I said, God, you put more money in the bag. I, I kept giving hundred dollar bills out of this bag. Now, I would give away a hundred dollar bill, and then when I told somebody about it, I would have people come up to me a week later and say, Pastor, here's $500 bills. Will you put it in that bag? I had people start giving me money to start putting in this bag. I was just obedient to give away what God put in the bag. How many of you know God can only get through you what you're allowed to release? He'll give it to you as long as he can get it through you. Good work. <laughs> Huh? Does that sound like something you say a lot? Is that on your, huh? 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 Yeah, that's a Jerryism. Is that on this little board back there y'all gave him for his 60 years? Huh? Yeah. So I want to ask tonight, just really quick, in this room, if you're here in this room, and you say, I need $100 to do something. Now, I don't talk about you need $100 to go buy a new dress or something. I'm saying you you need $100 to pay a bill or something, or you need, you, and you needed that. When you come in here, will you, will you just raise your hand? Anybody? You guys all have plenty of money? Come on. Need it for school? Come up here, you two. Come on. Come here. Yeah, no, come here. Come here. Come here. No, no, I want them to come up here. Come on. Come on, they're going to get your $100 bills, dollar bills later. <laughs> Father, I just put so this $100 bills into these guys. Father, let it, let it be a seed. So, amen? Amen? Go ahead, let it flow through you. Anybody else? Okay. Good deal. I'm going to tell you what. Don't come back tomorrow. I'm not doing this tomorrow. <laughs> let's, let's the whole, I'm supposed to give you another one. How, however, Pastor Jerry, this is a good plan to get people to come back a second night. <laughs> if you just give out $100 bills. I want you guys to know something. I, I, I want to make this clear. I would appreciate it. You just ask the Holy Spirit what you're supposed to do. You say, are you giving any out on this side? Yeah. Can I say something about this too? Listen, God would tell me to go up and give somebody a hundred dollar bill. And, and how many of you, anybody in this room, I know y'all don't do this. You argue with God. This is what I said. I said, God, that person gave me money to put in the bag. And God said, no, you give them a hundred dollar bill. Did you know that our job isn't to give to people that need it? It's to give to people who God tells you to give it to. That's for you. You hear what I'm saying? Come on, is anybody okay with this? Yeah, these are real. I didn't print these off at the hotel. Pass that to your friend. You say, Mom, I'm going to go to church with that girl again.
Yep. Hold on. Are we getting this on live stream all the way back here? How many are up there in the booth? How many are up there? Ray, here. Will you pass those out? Here you go. Yep, here you go. Thank you, sir. That's for lunch today. <laughs> <laughs> Father, I just thank you for tonight. I thank you for your presence. Thank you, God, that you're here to speak to us. Father, we're just obedient to you. <laughs> Yes. Father, we just listen to you and we obey. Father, we just thank you today for your presence. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And everybody said? Amen. Amen. I want you all to turn to John chapter 2 on your either devices or on, if you have a real Bible. I like using my real Bible. Let me give that to you. I, um, I want to share with you something from a story that's probably familiar with everybody. And... Uh, I know that was kind of weird, wasn't it? That's a weird little point in the service. So, yeah. When we do offering later, don't say you don't have anything to give. I'm just kidding. No, listen, listen. I, I do want to encourage you. Really listen to the Holy Spirit. Some of you might need a seed to sow. That's seed to sow. So that bag keeps filling up. So I ain't worried about the bag because the provider does that. So just obey. So it's, it's amazing what God's doing. Even if I just did that tonight to encourage somebody in here to be generous. Yeah. Be generous with what God puts through to you. Um, I want to share with you, share with you a uh, story tonight. Like I said, that's familiar. And I'm going to try to get us back on track here and share with you what I felt like God put on my heart for tonight. You know, all through the book of John, the book of John has seven miracles that are listed in the whole book. And um, actually, they're, they're actually more than just miracles. They're actually labeled something else. And you're going to see when we talk about the first one tonight, they're not labeled just miracles. They actually have a different um, definition of what they are. They're actually miracles with a message. They're actually miracles with an extra significance. Because how many of you know miracles happen in our lives every day? Some of you right now, a miracle just happened. You needed some money, you got it. You didn't admit it, but you got it, okay? Um, listen, how many of you are breathing right now? Amen. That's a miracle. Yeah, I mean, None of you can even explain how it works. Yeah, come on. That you're breathing in oxygen and you're living or whatever, that's a miracle. What we, what we have here in the, in the book of John are seven miracles that are actually defined on a greater level. They're miracles with a message. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna, we're just going to talk about one of them tonight. Don't worry, we're not going to talk about all seven. But let me just tell you what they are. The first one we're going to talk about, he turns water into wine. Okay. The second one is he heals an official son. The third one is he heals the man by the pool of Bethesda. The fourth one is he feeds 5,000 men and who knows how many women and children as well, right? The fifth one is he walks on water. The sixth one is he heals a blind man. And the seventh one is he raises Lazarus from the dead. But I want us to look at this time when he turns water to wine. And I want to read this story. Let's read it real quick. John chapter 2. And then we're just going to break it apart. Some of this, how many of you know sometimes... We had a lady in our church Sunday that stood up and gave a prophetic word, and it was from a scripture out of Isaiah 41. And it was 41.10, and it was about, you know, not to fear. Do not fear. How many of you know sometimes you can be so familiar with the word of God that you actually don't hear the revelation that God's trying to give you? Because you just say, well, I've heard that story before. I've already heard that before. You know, pastor preached on that last year, and I've already heard that before. I, I want to just encourage you tonight, don't grow familiar with this passage and let the Holy Spirit speak to you. We're going to, let's read it. Here we go. John chapter 2. On the third day, 
there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee. And the mother of Jesus was there. Now both Jesus and his disciples were invited to the wedding. And when they ran out of wine, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. Jesus said to her, Woman, what does your concern have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, I love this part, Whatever he says to you, do it. Now there were set there six water pots of stone, according to the manner of purification of the Jews, containing twenty or thirty gallons apiece. Jesus said to them, Fill the water pots with water. And they filled them up to the brim. And he said to them, Draw some out now and take it to the master of the feast. And they took it. When the master of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine, he did not know where it came from. How many of you know if he did, he probably wouldn't have drank it. But the servants had drawn the water new. The master of the feast called the bridegroom, and he said to him, Every man at the beginning sets out the good wine, and when the guests have well drunk, then the inferior. You have kept the good wine until now. Verse 11 says this, This beginning of signs. By the way, this miracle was called a sign. And every other miracle in the book of John, all seven were signs. Signs are miracles with significance. That's good. In other words, it wasn't just an everyday miracle. And it wasn't, doesn't mean that healing a blind man can't be something that happens every day. But these seven, these seven miracles were signs. They were miracles with significance. And it says that the beginning of signs Jesus did in Cana of Galilee and manifested his glory and his disciples believed in him. Let's pray. Father, I thank you tonight for your word. I thank you, God, that your word's living, it's alive, it's active. I thank you, Father, today your word has the ability to touch our lives and change us from the inside out, to transform us. God, I'm thankful today my stories don't have that power, but your word has that power. And God, when your word is wrapped up in my life and in my tongue and my words, we declare your word tonight, it transforms us from the inside out. We receive your word tonight in Jesus' name. And everybody said. Amen. So let's break this story down for just a minute. I don't have a lot of time. I know it's Tuesday night. And we've already done one thing already. So I wanna, but I want to share this with you. I want us to talk about this story for a minute. First of all, just let's talk about three things. This wedding had people at it. Had people at it. It had a problem at it. How many of you know usually when you have people, you always have a problem? It had people, it had a problem, and it needed some provision, okay? It had those three things. But I, I want to just say this. When this story begins, it begin, he begins to tell us who was at the wedding. Let's just name some people. You notice it doesn't say who the, the bride or the bridegroom was. We don't know their names, but how many of you know they were there? If it's a wedding, there was a bride and a bridegroom there. But we do know Mary, mother of Jesus, was there. She was probably more than just attending the wedding because she was concerned because the wine ran out. She probably was the wedding planner. Probably. She could have been. I'm just guessing. So that could have happened. We know, guess who else was there? Jesus was there. The disciples were there. We know the master of the ceremony was there. We know there were servants there. Okay, so all of these people were there. One of the things I take from that, if there's a miracle or there's a sign that Jesus does, I, I want to just say this. You can never experience a miracle by yourself. Never. It's impossible. You say, what do you mean? No, you can never experience a miracle by yourself. If you were there all by yourself, you didn't experience a miracle. Guess what? There had to be one other person there. At least Jesus. There could be somebody else beyond that, but Jesus has to be there because he's the miracle worker. He's the miracle giver. So we know from this story, this isn't even where I'm going. I'm just giving you some facts out of this, okay? I'm going to get to my assignment in just a minute. Okay, so just hang on, hold on. Here we are. Jesus is there. We know that if there's going to be a miracle, then we have to have somebody else there. I can't experience a miracle by myself. That's why you guys are here on Tuesday night. You can, that's why you show up on Sunday, whether 
whether it's rain, snow, whether it, COVID is out, whatever. You, that's why you show up, because the power of God shows up when we all come together corporately. How many of you know, yes, we experience them when we're home and when we're driving in our car or whatever, but how many of you know miracles are manifested when we're all together and we get faith? I mean, when, when is it Richard? When you play the drums, I was, I was feeling some faith tonight, yeah. right? We were all, I'm like, and hit them some more. Hit them again. Keep hitting them. Don't stop. Keep singing. When Tony was singing, woo, that was good stuff. Yeah. Josiah, right? Josiah, you were leading over here. When you were singing, everybody, I don't know everybody's name up here, but we stir up faith. And what happens? Then miracles happen. So here we know that there's people there. I'm just setting this up. Okay, so just listen to me. Let's go through this for a minute. People are there. We have to have other people around if we're going to experience a miracle. And then here's something else that I want to just take from this now when we're in this part of the story. Okay, now we know there's a problem. There's no wine. Now, let's take, I'm going to share with you things that I've heard preached all my life that are symbolic in this passage. Just the given. Okay? Right? The wine, everybody knows, I think everybody in here would know this. What does the wine represent? Joy represents what? The Holy Spirit. Represents the outpouring of the Holy Spirit in our lives. It represents joy. Represents, there's so many things it's symbolic for. Well, there was no more wine. The wine ran out. How many of you know that in our lives, when we get depleted, of the Holy, when we, and you just say, I understand this, listen, I understand the Holy Spirit doesn't leave us, but how many of you know when we let so many other things take His place in our life, you might as well just say, there's no more wine available. How many of you know that's a problem? And so now we got a problem. So now that's happening in the story. And so now what do we find out? Mary, Mary says, Jesus, there's no more wine. Just like all of us, when we have a problem, even people who aren't in church every week, when they have a problem, they, go, they, start calling Pastor, they start calling Pastor Jerry. They start calling on Jesus. They start calling on somebody that knows Jesus. How many of you have had people do that? They're never in your life, but when they need Jesus, they're going to call on you. Why? Because when you run out, you're going to call for whoever can produce the miracle. Mary knew who could produce the miracle. She said, Jesus, we have no more wine. We know Jesus says what he said. If I said what he said to his mama, I'd be slapped across my face a few times. Silly. I ain't going to say that to my mama. Woman. Woman. <laughs> tried it. My mom attends our church. I even tried it one time. I said, woman, in, uh, in the sermon. And you, she stared me down so hard, I had to stop preaching for a few minutes just to get my composure. But she says, Jesus, we have more wine. And guess what? He says, well, my time's not yet come. And still yet, she's like, you know what? Servants. Then she speaks to the servants. Servants, whatever he tells you, you do it. In other words, Jesus might not do it right now. But at some time in my life, he's going to perform a miracle. And I'm going to be ready for it. So Mary said, servants, whatever he tells you to do, you do it. Now, we don't know what the time frame was, just so you know, in this passage. I don't know if it took a little while. It was just a verse after, really quick. In the, in the thing, it says, well, hey, Jesus then says to the servants, he tells the servants to go fill, fill up those water pots. And now what happens? They take it to the master of the ceremony. He takes a drink. This is the best wine. You've saved the best wine till last. That does, that's not what people normally do. He freaks out about it. So we have this miracle. How many of you have heard that story before? Raise your hand. Love it. Love it. Now let me share with you something that I feel like the Holy Spirit stirred up on the inside of me out of this story. Maybe you've heard it before. I don't know. It was new to me. Maybe it was an old revelation for some of you, but I want to share something with you. Now I got this little, I'm a, I'm a kind of an illustrative kind of guy. So I'm a, I'm, that's not probably the best, best uh, water pot, but it's the best I could come up with from Walmart, okay, that you could see through, okay? Now I want to talk about something out of this passage, 
And this is my assignment for tonight. All of that was just to get to this point. Takes me a while, but I get there. Sitting at the entrance way of every, every place that there's an event or a festival or anything that was official, there were always six water pots sitting there. Now, there's a lot of significance. People talk about there were earthen stone pots and different things like that. I'm not going that way today. But there were six water pots sitting there. And what would happen is people would come to the wedding and as they entered the door of the wedding the story that we just read how many of you believe the bible okay just making sure so when you enter in for the wedding or anything that you entered into there was always these six the the story says it but most people skip over it and you don't think about it they were six water pots that were for ceremonial cleansing or purification. And so when somebody entered the house, they had been out on the dirty road. They had stepped in camel poo. Donkey dung got between their toes. Oh my Lord. And they knew it because it got warm for a minute. And they knew it was fresh. And they would walk and they'd have dust all over them. But before they entered the house, what they'd do is they'd come in and they'd find that there was a rag there and they would dip that rag down into the pot. Those pots were 20 to 30 gallons a piece. Right. I, I, I saved the water in the kitchen tonight. I didn't use all 20 or 30 gallons. We just did this. But literally they would be filled up to the top. And I didn't do that tonight either because you guys have had enough scares with water here in the past <laughs> that I don't want to, I didn't want to cause any more, but they would literally come in, and as they would come in to wash themselves off, they would come in and they would dip this thing down in there and wipe their hands off and wipe their feet off. And all of a sudden, they'd start cleaning their bodies off and get their, clean their, can you come help me with my feet? I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. And, uh, and, and what they would do is that's what they would just come in and person after person out of those pots. Now, picture with me, I didn't do it tonight, but they're full. And somebody comes in and dips their rag down in there to wash their face off. What happens when they dip their rag down in there? Water does what? Spills over the sides, down onto the ground right there. But they wash themselves off. And they put it all in here. Now the water that was there for ceremonial cleansing begins to all of a sudden have each person's life represented in the pot. Person after person. Crap they've been through that day. Stuff that hurt their eyes or their vision would be wiped off. Things that were on their face that would change their identity or what people thought of them would be washed off of their face. And it would all go into those water pots. And as they did it, the water pots that used to be 20 or 30 gallons full, now water would spill over and some of the water was used on their bodies would leave the pots. And I said all that to say this. Jesus didn't turn spring water into wine. This is the message in the miracle right here. I want you to listen to this. The miracle is really cool if you just say he turned water into wine. But he did a whole lot more than that. Come on. What he did is he set an example over the course of the book of John what the Lamb of God really does in our life. Listen to this. He takes everything that's going on in our lives and as we walk in and wash ourselves off and it gets all dirty. Remember, this is what Jesus now tells the, to the servants. If you want to go back and look at it and read it, you can do it on your own time. But this is what it says. Go and fill the water pots up to the brim. Notice, he didn't say go and empty the water pots. 
and put in some new water. He said, go and take those water pots of 20 or 30 gallons and fill them to the brim. If I had water in here right now, Pastor Jerry, I'd take this dirty water and I would start filling it up with water and we'd fill it all the way up to the brim. And then he told the servants, he said, take a cup of that and take it to the master of the ceremony. <laughs> now, <laughs> listen to the story. Listen to the story. Now, listen, this may be, is anybody getting this? Yeah, come on. If you're getting it right now, I mean, we can just close the service. We're done. I mean, no, we don't need an organ player or nothing else. If you can catch this, does everybody hear what I'm saying? He takes all of our stuff, everything we go through, all the, all the hassles, all the problems, all the situations. He takes just the stuff of everyday life. It doesn't have to be anything bad. It just weighs us down. And we wash it off in the pot. And all of a sudden, he tells the servants, this thing right here needs to be cut off. And, 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 and he, he, take, he takes, you all have a saw, we'll do it right now. He, he, he takes, he tells those guys, take those pots. Now listen to this. He take, they take a cup to the master of the ceremony. And I love it says this. He did not know where it come from. Do you know why? If they said, master... Jesus told us to take a scoop of this out of the pots out there where everybody's been washing their crap in yeah. and he wants you to taste it. First. <laughs> yes. Nobody, the servants didn't taste it first, yeah. but it says the servants knew where it came from. That's good. There's so much in this passage right here. I don't even have time to break it down. You can preach on every one of this. Are you ready for this? But notice this. Those of you in here that are servants of God, there's things that you know that nobody else knows. There are things that Jesus reveals to you that he doesn't reveal to anybody else. Some people say God, God's no respecter of persons and he does for one person that he does for the other. That's not true. That's not true. Listen, Joe and Joe Sinner down the road and a child of God, Jesus reveals things to a child of God that he may, he may not reveal to Joe Joe Sinner down the road. Can I, did you know that? Let me just tell you something else too, just to tell you this. Not everybody's a child of God. I love y'all. I don't know, y'all aren't talking to me. Is it usually this quiet on Tuesday nights? Is this normal? This is normal? You feel good about it? This is this okay? If I don't get invited back, it's y'all's fault. Because he's going to be like, well, they didn't really get into that. I mean, they weren't even talking to him. I didn't hear no amens. Lori, we ain't calling that guy back. Does everybody hear what I'm saying? Jesus, Jesus then takes, look, I, had, I had a lady in our church when, when, I said, when I said, you know, not everybody's a child of God. She came up to me afterwards, Pastor, you're wrong. We're all God's children. I said, well, you don't know the Bible very well. Because it says this, it says only those who believe were called and are adopted as the sons of God. That's what it says. So if you don't believe, you ain't a child of God. Does everybody hear what I'm saying? Now, does God love the person who's not a child of God just as much as he does you? Oh, yes, he does. Because while, while you and I were still sinners, he died for us. So that we ain't arguing that. But what I'm saying is the servants knew something that nobody else knew. So what's the Holy Spirit for in our life? What's the wine for? Was it just to be a cool little sign? Listen, it does say that people believed. How many of you know if there was no wine and Jesus turned the water into wine and you heard that story, that's great. But how many of you want to make a bet that the servants left there with a greater understanding of the power of Jesus Christ when they realized he didn't just turn a jug of water into wine. He, he turned camel poo and dog poo and donkey poo and dust and stuff off of everybody's lives. He took that and he combined it. This is, this is the thing. Think about it. He added living water yeah. Ooh, come on. to our mess yeah. and turned it into wine. Listen, I don't care how good you think your life is. You're still a big mess. Yes. You can just say that right now. I'm a big mess. You are. We are big messes. We are. 
But anytime you think you're better than that, then that's where you lose it. You forget the grace of God's not on your life any longer because God's grace, He comes in when we know that, hey, wow, we are nothing without Him. Yep, come on. We are nothing without Him. There is no more wine. Now, let me tell you this, another thing about this. This is another thought. <laughs> Have you ever heard the story or the phrase, I'm trying to think what the phrase is. I had it in my mind. Hey, I'm 50 years old. I have some phrases come in and they go out before I can share it. Yeah, I'm just 50. Is that okay or no? Am I not that? Am I too? Do y'all think I was older? Oh. You thought I was older? Yeah. Uh. <laughs> How many of you know this? Half of something is as good as nothing. Right. Oh man, that's good. Half of something is as good as nothing. If I give this to you, why in the world? Why in the world? Why in the world do we as believers, our churches around the world, Settling for just a few little pieces of Jesus mm, when we can have the whole thing. Wow. Jesus is saying, listen, I don't want you just to do what you do and, and do life the way you do it without me. What, what that represented is all of these guys were doing life. They were celebrating even marriage of somebody else and they were going to do it with no wine. Do you know how many believers are doing life without the Holy Spirit every day? Yeah, and they yeah. think they're actually living life. Come on, brother. I'm not going to debate whether you'll go to heaven or not. Because I mean, or whether even, we won't even talk about if there is a heaven. I don't know. We'll, that's another theological discussion. Y'all looking at me funny now. I just was talking. Just making you think. Just making you think. Okay. But listen, listen, I, I'm, I'm, I, but I am a, a little bit stronger. I ain't trying, listen, the, some people are trying so hard to get somewhere that God's trying to get to us. Yeah. Wow. We need to live heaven on earth. Listen, and what he's saying is he's saying, why do you want to live and try to just take a little bit of me when what I'm trying to do is if I can take your junk and I can pour my living water into it, I can turn you into new wine. Come on, man. Now, the master of the ceremony said this. This is better than the, the other stuff. <laughs> Do you know what the other stuff was? You. Yeah, come on. This is better than the other stuff. In other, it's, a, it's a picture of saying, in other words, when Jesus takes his presence and invades our lives. Now, all of a sudden, we say, you know what? Because this does work. You can take that baby up and take it to the bank and they'll take it right there. That's the only reason I ripped it up. So there you go. Yeah, take that up and you can have that one. Um, everybody bow your heads with me. Can somebody come to the keys or something or guitar or hop on the guitar? Everybody just bow your heads for a moment. This isn't really where I was really totally heading tonight. This is where we ended up. So, is that okay? I really have something to share tomorrow night too. So I hope you guys are going to come back, come to the other campus tomorrow night. Never know. You never know. Never know. Never know. You never know. <laughs> Just take a second. You know, sometimes we rush through things. We got, I think I'm in my time zone real easy here. As a matter of fact, just while you got sitting there with your eyes closed for a moment, I'm going to just share a couple things with you that maybe we'll give you a moment just to process.
this story is interesting because it it highlighted the fact that there was no more wine. And not only did it highlight the fact that there was no more wine, it highlighted the fact that there was also one that could create more wine. One of the other interesting facts about this story is it was, it took place in Cana. <laughs> and Cana actually means the place of creation. <laughs> it literally pictorially means to take nothing and turn it into something. That's what the word Cana means in the Greek. To take absolutely nothing and create it into something. See, men and women, we need something to create something. If we're going to build a house, we have to have the lumber. We have to have the nails. If we're going to paint a room, we have to buy the paint or we have to have the paintbrush. But our God, He knows how to take nothing and turn it into something. So what I want to do tonight, this is going to be my way of closing, Pastor, if this is okay, if, it, if, if it's all right with you. I want us just to respond. I'm a, some people don't like doing this, and it's okay. I understand. But I'm a point of contact kind of guy. <laughs> and sometimes just walking things through and actually visualizing them in my life sometimes helps. It's just a point of contact. And what I, maybe in this room as Josiah's playing for us so well, up here in the front is this bucket that represents those water pots. And if you're in this room tonight and you say this, Pastor, I want to trade my nasty old self. I want to trade in all the gunk and the junk and all the thoughts that have been going through my head. I want to trade in the rumors, the things that have been said about me. I want to bring all those to the water pot and wash those off of me. I'm going to get those. People said I couldn't do it. I ain't going to make it. I want to wash that off of my mind tonight. I want you just to maybe, maybe you just respond and come up here to the water pot for a moment. I don't want you to put your hands down in there or anything, but maybe just come up and stand in front of the water pot and just say, God, I'm coming to the water tonight. I'm coming to the water pot and I want you to pour in fresh living water into my life. Just respond. You just do it. You be the first. Don't wait on anybody else. You just come up and you do it and you move out of the way. Somebody else might come up or somebody might stand beside of you. And then let me throw this in there. Some of you might be in here and say, you know what? I just want to tell God I want to be a servant. I want to be, I want to be those guys that when he tells me to do something, I do it. I don't ask questions. I don't ask why. I'm telling you this this, this man, there might not be any fireworks going off right now in this room, but I think on the inside of our lives and our hearts tonight, there's some response. There's some, there's some things that you're, you're bringing to God and to Jesus, and you, you're just saying, hey, that's me. I, I want to be a servant. I want to be one that's quick to obey. I want to be one that the moment you tell me to go do it, I'll do it. I'll fill that up to the brim. I'll, I, I, I may not understand what it is you tell me to do, but I'll do it. <laughs> you may say, God, I need all that junk washed off of my life, off of my mind. My past has been holding me down, and my, I need you to quiet my past. I need all that stuff washed off of me tonight in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Come on, and just let the Holy Spirit do it. Just let the Holy Spirit do it. Let Him, let him create something out of nothing tonight. Come on, let Him, let him take something and 
and rearrange it and let him let him let him wipe wipe off those places that you've not been able to reach <laughs> that other people have been seeing let it come on just say holy spirit god here i am jesus do it tonight do it tonight I love the uniqueness of Scripture that you can take a John chapter 2, which I've preached on so many times. He saves the best for last, and it's, it's expensive, and it's exquisite, and I've talked about the wine. But Pastor Richard, I've never heard this other part tonight, so I can't wait to steal that and take it somewhere else and preach it. And, you know, going to the nations, man, I hear you. It's just a good word to remind, and I just saw... The Chosen. If you've not seen The Chosen, I've been watching that. And they just did the six water pots, and we were kind of discussing that at the house. It's really a good series that's out right now. That's, as a matter of fact, it's free for you to pick up. If I get our servant leaders to come up. Now, again, when Jody gave you the money, it's up to you to do with it, be obedient with it, like the servants were. Amen. I just felt like God told me to add to it, so I'm just going to add to it tonight. Fill his bag back up. Do you enjoy this tonight? 
Amen. I feel like it, it just it was just what we needed to hear. Amen. Just what we needed to hear. Well, those watching online, I know you enjoyed this tonight. Amen. Share it with somebody. We'll be having church tomorrow out in New Caney. We'll start as close to seven-ish. <laughs> yeah, New Caney's a little different. We try to work the live stream here. We get out there, you know, it sometimes gets a little later out in the woods. But love to have you to come out tomorrow. And many, if you've not been on the property lately, we'd love to have you come out. And let me say kudos to H and James and those that take care of the property here. Without you guys, man, it, we would be, I don't know what we'd be doing because we couldn't be able to handle everything we got. And I think when God gave us both properties, he gave it to us little by little. And he gave it in such a way to help us handle it. And now we're able to handle it. Amen. So if you need a tither offer an envelope, they're in front of you. Amen. So we're going to take a, a, the offering here tonight. But let me mention to you, on Saturday, 9 o'clock, we, we'll be having our last ropes course of the summer. Give Jesus praise. Hallelujah. Amen. So we've got made it through our summer. School will be starting back, I understand, in August the 9th or so. And uh, we will have baptism this Sunday. So if you've not been baptized, you'd like to be baptized, please call the office or let somebody know that, that's connected with me. Amen. Or David, make sure we find out so we can get you a certificate and, and uh, we'll get the tub filled and get the ice water in it and get you ready for, for this Sunday. So we'll be baptized and you just bring an extra set of clothes and we'll get you taken care of. And don't forget all, every Tuesday night, prayer meeting in here, family beach day coming up, ladies. Uh, lift uh, services coming up, ladies, and fellowship together. And save the date, guys. September the 19th, Muscle Car Sunday. Amen. So we'll start praying toward that date. September the 19th. Coming quick. Our theme this year, no pain, no gain. I'll give you the three points right now for you ball play. No pain, no gain. No guts, no glory. No cross, no crown. Amen. So I'm going to start my sermon early. Father, we thank you for the gift and the giver. We ask you to bless this. We thank you for what you did in our hearts tonight, how you've taken the filthy rags that we are, and you've washed us in your righteousness. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. As the page pass, as the bowls go past you, consider yourself dismissed. Love you guys. Bye-bye. See you tomorrow night at 7-ish.